Today I'm going to show you how I calibrate my videos from this to this in Adobe Premiere Pro. Also, I'm going to show you how to make it look like 4K even if I'm shooting with my Canon 80D. So, just three simple steps, very simple. Without any further ado, let's get started. Big disclaimer, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm not an expert in audio or video editing. All that I know, I have learned from these awesome creators like Premiere Ga, Adobe's own Jason Levine and Mike Russell. So if you really want to dig into audio or video editing, do check them out. Stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to make you listen to the before and after audio, which is guaranteed to blow your mind. All right, let's jump into Adobe Premiere and keep in mind step number two is the most important step. So here we are on our computer screen and the first thing that we have to do is to start Premiere Pro. So obvious, so let's go ahead and start it out and it should take a while to load depending upon the speed of your computer system. Okay, so let's give it some time and you should see this window. All you have to do, click on new project and let's name it, let's say color grading and let's save it on desktop. So I'm going to choose the location. I have made this folder color grading picks imperfect. So I'm going to choose desktop and I'm going to save it in this folder. Double click on it and click on choose. And everything you do, scratch disks and stuff will be saved in that folder project files. Okay, so make sure that scratch disks are same as projects. Okay, and, if, and everything else should be fine. Make sure it's OpenCL on a Mac and if your computer PC has NVIDIA graphics card, make sure it's CUDA. Okay, it just helps your system render the videos faster by making use of the graphics processing unit or your graphics card. All right, just hit OK and you will see something like this. If you don't see it, just click on that grid beside edit and make sure reset to saved layout. Okay, so it will be reset to its default. Now. Instead of going into import and importing the clip, here's what I personally do. I open up my finder on a Windows, it would be Explorer, and I open up the desktop, I have the sample clip here, just drag it and drop it on the timeline, just like that. And your sequence will automatically be created according to it. So here we have our clip from the previous tutorial. So what is the code to the perfect skin tone? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the volume for the sake of this tutorial. So let's mute it, we don't need it right now. Here it is. It just looks pretty good, but the colors don't seem right or it's not looking classy. So how to make it interesting? Very simple. The first step is let's drop in a Lumetri effect. Okay, so where can you find it? Let's go to effects here. Click on this arrow and make sure you're in the effects tab. Now inside of effects, go to video effects. Now inside of video effects, you'll find color correction. And inside of that, you will find Lumetri. There it is, Lumetri color. You can also search it. In the search, you can type in Lumetri and at the bottom you'll find Lumetri color. Just drag it and drop it over the clip just like that. Also you can go to the effect controls and drag it and drop it here. You can also drag it and drop it on the master clip as well. Let's not get into that. Let's go simple first time. So once you drag it and drop it here in the effects control you will see the Lumetri color effects control tab right here and you can make basic adjustments here and stuff. Now instead of doing that we can do it more conveniently inside of the color workspace. So let's go to the color workspace and here you have it open everything is open it makes it so much more better. Let's reset it if you don't see it that way click on it and reset to save layout. You should see it this way as you reset it. Okay, so we have the basic corrections, everything in just a slider. Isn't that awesome? Now the first step is to get it look good. Play with the sliders and get it look okay-ish. We will refine it later in step two, which is the most important stuff using scopes. But first of all, get the image to look good to your eye. So here I'm going to open the Lumetri scopes so that we can see what's happening inside of the image and we will explain that later a little bit and let's make it a little big so that we can see the image better and let's make some basic adjustments. Let's go to the basic corrections and just play with it. Play with the exposure, contrast, highlights. It just should look good. Don't go into advanced as of now, HSL secondary and all that stuff. Let's go, let's do the basic stuff. So I personally think the exposure is a little too low so I'm going to increase it just a tad bit to 0.8. That looks fine and let's uh, Contrast is fine, increasing it just destroys the image and anytime you want to reset something, just double click on it and it resets. Okay, so let's get the highlights a little high probably. There's a lot of highlights on the forehead so we'll not go that high, let's just decrease it a bit. And let's, once we decrease the highlights, 
The shadows are also too bright. As you can see in the background, the shadows are bright. So let's go ahead and decrease the shadows as well. This looks pretty good. And what about the whites? Let's try decreasing it. Does it help? A little bit, it does help. What about the blacks? Let's keep it at minus five, yes. So the dynamic range is expanded. Now, here we have the Lumetri scopes. Now, once you take in the blacks to the left, see this area begins to touch the surface. This is the surface, this is the roof. This is the ground, this is the roof, okay? So if your levels are here, which means you're not using the complete dynamic range which is available. So you have to make this touch the bottom and make this touch the roof. If you want to make the video, take the advantage of the complete dynamic range. So we're gonna decrease the blacks to somewhere around this number. And probably let's increase the whites a little bit. Now, uh, it looks okay to me. Let's have a look at the before and after. So if I turn this off, click on the effects to turn it off. This is the before and this is the after. But yet we need to make adjustments to the skin and all that advanced stuff. That comes in step number two. Step number two is getting the skin tones right. If you're recording a video of yourself or somebody else, if it's an interview, you have to make sure that the skin tone looks perfect. That's the most important thing. All right, so how do we make it happen? Very simple. First of all, let's get back to the editing panel. Now, if you're using an older version of Premiere Pro, you might not see workspaces here. You might have to go to Windows and then Workspaces and you have all these workspaces. Okay, so once we are inside of editing, let's do this. Let's take a sample of just the skin, all right? Let's make it big or right click on it and let's zoom in, let's magnification, let's choose 200%. Okay, pretty good. Now we can take a sample of the skin. Let's go here. Okay, now on the opacity properties inside of the effect controls, make sure you're in the effect controls tab. Opacity, just click on this square, okay? And we're gonna select a sample of the skin, which is flat, doesn't have much variation. So we're gonna choose this area. As you can see, the edges are soft, so we will just simply decrease the mask feather. Okay, so we have a sample of the skin, which is pretty good. Now, if you get this look right, everything else will be in place, right? Maybe or maybe not, we'll see that later. So once you have that sample already selected, let's go back to color, okay? Now we have Lumetri scopes open inside of this. So if you if it's not open, if it's source, just make sure Lumetri scopes is selected and make sure you have waveform luma and vector YUV. If it's not the case, let's see if it's something like this, you can already right click on it and just select vector by UV, that's what you want, and waveform RGB, and then right click on it and choose waveform type to Luma. Now you have that. Now you can remove this one, we don't need it. Waveform HLS, click on it to remove it. Now you have just two. And we just need these two right here. So let's move in right there. And let's see where it's pointing at. Let's see where the skin tone is pointing at. So it's pointing a little bit towards the left of this line. Now keep in mind, this line that you see right here is the skin tone line. The skin tones should fall on this line or a little bit to the right, okay? So we have to make adjustments to the skin tone as such so that this line aligns with the skin tone line. And how can we make it happen? Simple, you have to make some adjustments. Let's go to the sample clip right here. We have made some adjustments here. We have to just refine those adjustments. So let's play with the white balance first. It helps a lot. Uh, let's make it a little warmer, something like that. It doesn't help. Let's increase the tint. Yes, if you increase the tint, see this moves, right? So we need to make sure it's on that line. So let's go 13-ish is fine. Okay, now let's adjust it. I think the exposure was fine. The contrast was fine. Maybe the highlights and shadows can be adjusted. Now, as you can see, this dark area is at level 60. Now, depending upon your skin tone, depending upon what type of skin tone you have, how bright your skin is, you will see the numbers here. For brown skin tones like mine, the level would be around 50 to 60. For a brighter skin tone, it might be around probably white skin tone. It might be around 70 to 80. And if you have darker skin tones, maybe around 40 to 50. Just make sure that you don't go below 40. All right. It can, it totally is something which is personal. So you have to play with it and figure out. For my skin tones, 50 to 60 level works, okay? So let's go ahead and decrease the exposure, not the exposure, let's go ahead and decrease the highlights a little bit more. See, it's coming down right here. It's the Luma waveform. And let's decrease the shadows as well. Now, I'm going lower because I've sampled from a shadow area, okay? Let's go minus 
um, let's see, minus 30-ish would be fine for this one. And the shadows are too dark. Let's keep it a little 28-ish. That is fine. Now the white and the black point are best set when we can see all of the Luma waveform. So let's go back to the effect controls and let's turn off the opacity for a moment so that we can see all of the image. And let's go back to Lumetri scopes. Now we can see it all. Let's set the black point so that it touches this nicely. So if we go too much, we will lose the details. As you can see, we are losing details here. So just let's choose a point where it's just touching it. So we're gonna choose something like, let's go for eight-ish, nine-ish, that's fine. And let's increase the white so that majority of it touches. Okay, let's go for, it's touching at this point. I guess I should go for a little lesser than that. 26 is fine, all right? Now it's beginning to look good. Let's refine the adjustments even more. So right click on it and choose magnification and let's fit it. Magnification, fit, okay? It's looking too magenta-ish and too saturated as well. First of all, let's address too much magenta. So here's what we do. We come back, go to the curves. Let's click on the curves. And what is the opposite of magenta? Green, right? RGB is the opposite of CMY. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is the opposite of magenta. And blue is the opposite of yellow. Okay, so let's go to green and we have to increase the green to counter magenta. So let's increase it in the shadows a little bit, just a touch, not too much. It's going green right now, just a touch. Just a touch in the highlights. It looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the before and after. So before curves, to magenta, after curves. So I think I increased it too much. So let's decrease it, okay. That looks better. Now, as you can see, the shadows are very saturated and it's a little bit yellowish. So what do we do? First of all, right click on it and let's go magnify it and let's just manage it again. Let's go 200%. Okay. So we have to select the shadow colors. And how can we do that? In the HSL panel, HSL panel. So we select that and then we set the color first. Click on that eyedropper tool and we wanna choose this color. Okay, we chose that color. Now, make sure you check color gray so that you can see which areas are selected. Now, let's adjust it so that it's selected nicely. It's just like hue saturation in uh, Photoshop where you select a particular range. You expand the range and this is how smooth the transition is. So if you increase this, the transition will be more smoother. I just wanna select the dark areas and make the transition really, really smooth. Okay. It looks pretty perfect. Now, once you have that done, just check this off. Now, what we wanna do, we wanna decrease the saturation a little bit. Let's take it to 80-ish. It looks perfect. And let's increase the tint a little bit because it was looking a little yellowish. So it's okay, there we go. Now, right click on it and magnification, fit it and have a look at it. So here's the before, and here is the after. Looks so much more better. You know, but something is missing. That hunger for sharpness that makes photographers blow money like a boss and probably end up broke. And we're gonna save you some money today. Let's add that 4K beauty to this photo clip. So let's move on to this third step. All right, guys, this is very simple. First of all, zoom in 100%. Like we zoom in one is to one in Lightroom when we sharpen stuff. So similarly here, right click on it, and choose magnification and zoom in 100%. You can also choose 200%. Let me go 200% so that you, my friend, can actually see what's happening, okay? When you're doing it, you can do it 100%. So magnification, let's go 200%. Okay, now all we wanna do, we wanna go to creative and just increase the sharpness. So sharpen, just increase it. Now, it adds fake sharpness, but when you zoom out, it looks so awesome. You don't wanna add so much sharpness that it begins to pixelate. So we wanna stay at a number which looks good to your image. Again, it differs from camera to camera, video to video. So for this, I'm gonna choose something like, let's say 55-ish, but I'm gonna increase it so that you can see what's happening. Have a look at the before and after. So I've increased it right now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's go one is to one. Let's go 100 and have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, this is the before. Blurred out, right? So let, let me zoom in and show that to you. That's why you see my video so sharp. So this is the after, this is the before. 
This is the after. It looks so much more better. Now, this much is not required. You would go somewhere around 45-ish. Depends upon your image again. Now we have one more step which is completely optional and that is adding a vignette. It allows the viewer to focus on the subject and in videos like this, it might help. All right, so let's right click on it, magnification and let's fit it. Too many magnifications in this video. Okay, so let's scroll down to vignette and this is simple vignette. First of all, decrease the amount all the way to the left to see which areas are being darkened. Next, decrease the feather all the way to the left, okay? Now you control the roundness and the midpoint. So how do I want it to be? I want it to be a little round. I don't want vignette from the top. Now it's completely personal again. And I want the midpoint to be around here. Then you would increase the feather to suit you. I would go with this one and then you would increase the amount. Let's choose a more subtle amount. Probably I'll increase the feather even more. Let's choose a very subtle amount and there you go. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. It really helps add focus towards the face. You can also change the midpoint now. Probably would go with this and there you go, it's done. So let's have a look at the complete before and after. So I'm gonna make it big so that you can look better. So this is the after and this is the before. So before, after. Massive difference, isn't it? Now let's play it. You probably have seen this video, right? Okay, so that's pretty much how I color grade my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. At the end, secrets out guys, secrets out. As I promised, this is how the audio sounds before audition retouching or audition processing. And this is how the audio sounds after processing in Adobe Audition. Before Adobe Audition, after Adobe Audition. And if you wanna learn how to do it, let me know down in the comments below. I might be making a tutorial on that. Now, if I don't happen to make a tutorial, meanwhile, you can check this video, awesome video by Mike Russell, where he explains how to do it in four simple steps. Now, I have added some more steps to it. If you want to learn it, just let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want more of Premiere Pro tutorials, just let me know. Hope this video helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so very much for watching. And I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. And by the way, guys, I'm having live streams and live chats just with Patreon members so they can ask any question that they want. So if you're interested in joining Patreon, it really also helps the channel and also allows me to interact with you personally. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.